Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna cover the life of a marine who, by all the rules of natural law, should not be alive. A marine who defied the odds of space and time, surviving some of the most cataclysmic events in galactic history, when doing so was quite literally impossible. He survived countless encounters with the Covenant, the Sentinels, and the Flirt, and his name is Chips Dubbo. The origins of the mysterious Chips are entirely unknown, shrouded in more mystery than Oni's most classified documents. Rumours can be heard in the outer colonies that suggest he isn't technically human, rather an artificially created biological superweapon. Tales are told of his exploits during the war, but take everything from the outer colonies with a pinch of salt. With the strange drugs they take out there, honestly, you can never be too sure about anything they say. However, those are just baseless rumours. What we do know for sure is that the mythical Dubbo is of some sort of Australian descent. Maybe it's no coincidence that he's from the same country as Oni's top headquarters. Anywho, that's enough speculation for one video. How exactly did Chips achieve this mythological status that spawned all the rumours of his origin? Let's take a look. The first recorded sighting of Private First Class Chips Dubbo was on board the Pillar of Autumn, fleeing from Reach. Could it be that he fought on Reach and was one of its few survivors? I mean, some pilots who fought in the space battle at Anchor 9 swear that they heard his voice over one of the Saber comms, so perhaps his rumoured links to Oni are more than just rumours. Or was he merely just one of the Autumn's assigned Marines? I imagine that we'll never know for sure, but his presence on the Autumn would be one of great importance. He was the first Marine to meet Chief when the Covenant began boarding the ship, escorting the then unarmed Spartan to Captain Keys. Like the Chad that he is, Mr. Dubbo survived the boarding and destruction of the Autumn, most likely via life pod, and crash landed on Alpha Halo with his squad. Like the rest of the stranded Marines, he and his team quickly fell under heavy Covenant fire, but Chief eventually showed up to return the favour and save them, whisking them away to safety in Echo 419's Pelican. Although the safety would only be temporary. It wasn't long before our resident alpha male was back in action once again. Mere hours later, Chips took part in the raid on the Truth and Reconciliation to rescue Captain Keys. Although here, we run into another oddity with his story. He actually wasn't part of the same team as Chief that landed quite far away from the ship. Instead, he was part of the first strike team that landed much closer and were all killed. However, later on, when the group was staging their escape in the spirit, Chips appeared to complement Keyes' flying ability. So this raises yet another theory. Perhaps Chips Dubbo is no mortal man, rather a soul-like entity that, when its body is destroyed, can simply possess another. Could Chips Dubbo have transcended time and space and learnt to exist within the fourth dimension? I don't know, but I'll leave it open to you guys to discuss it in the comments. After defying death and flying away into the sunset, he embarked on yet another mission, this time as one of Captain Keyes' personal envoys. However, this would be his most horrifying operation yet, even for somebody of his calibre. Sometime before this, an elite was captured and interrogated at the UNSC's base of operations on the ring, Alpha Base. This elite, after much grilling, revealed the location of a Covenant weapons cache that he delivered to a facility hidden deep within one of the Halo swamps. Keyes saw intercepting this cache as a Priority One mission, and so set off for the facility with Fireteam Charlie, led by Johnson, and of course containing our main man Mr. Dubbo, and second squad for backup. However, when they got there, the facility they thought would be teeming with Covenant activity was empty and deathly quiet. The only remnant of the Covenant there were dead, mutilated bodies, and the deeper they went, the more death they could smell. Eventually, the dark secret of this facility was revealed, and Captain Keys and Fireteam Charlie were ambushed by the Flood. 
However, Chip somehow managed to survive this ambush. He got separated from Johnson, who made his own escape from the facility, and somehow managed to fight through hordes of infected by himself and make it back to the surface, where he rendezvoused with the survivors of Second Squad. However, Dubbo seemed to take somewhat of an interest in the Flood, and it was here where his alter ego, Chip's Dubbo Flood Hunter, would finally come to light. Okay, guys, I'm going to try and sneak up behind the Flood. I'm coming in behind them now, so shush, just be quiet. I can't believe it. What the hell are these things? Crikey, look at them. I've never seen anything like this before. If I can just get a little bit closer, maybe I can just prod one and see what it does. I've got to be really quiet now, okay? They look pretty bloody dangerous. Oh, crikey! I've never seen things like this before! He fought off the Flood with Chief in the Swamp until Echo 419 came to rescue the survivors. And from there on out, his whereabouts on the ring are a total mystery. Given that we never saw him again in Combat Evolved, we could very easily just assume that he never made it off the ring alive, but why would we underestimate Mr. Dubbo like that, when we all know what the man is truly capable of? Somehow, he managed to escape Alpha Halo before it was destroyed, and make it back to Earth safely. How exactly and is entirely unknown, again, shrouded in more mystery than anything only could ever classify. However, Chips didn't let these traumatic events and close shaves with death phase him. When the Covenant attacked Earth, your boy was on the front lines immediately. He deployed to New Mombasa with Chief, Johnson and the other Marines stationed on board the Inamberclad, but on the way down to the city, his Pelican was shot down by a Scarab. As you'd expect, this was absolutely nothing major to old Chips. He fought alongside Chief and Johnson through the streets of Old Mombasa, before eventually joining the fight in the industrial zone of New Mombasa. When Regret's ship was preparing to jump through the portal, he made it back on board the Amberclad just in time, surviving the portal closing and making his way to yet another Halo ring, Delta Halo. However, it's at this point where I need to introduce another theory, the Dubbo Clone Theory. While he was thousands of light years away fighting on Delta Halo, he was also encountered by Buck, still fighting the Covenant, in New Mombasa. Now, did Oni create multiple Dubbos? Did the simulation glitch out and duplicate the man? Again, I'll leave that up to you, the viewer, to try and answer in the comments. Over on Delta Halo, he once again fought alongside Chief through the ancient ruins of the ring, and helped him push off the rock and through the bush until they reached the Prophet of Regret but he let Chief have that one. However, it was around this time where Dubbo let his guard down and was captured by the Covenant and imprisoned on board High Charity at the worst time possible. At the dawn of the Great Schism, Chief used the ensuing anarchy on board the High Charity to his advantage, freeing Dubbo and his fellow Marines from their cells, and the Spartan once again joined forces with the Invincible Marine to slay all alien scum in their path. As the Flood begun infesting the city, Chief boarded the key ship back to Earth, leaving Dubbo behind. But as we know, Chips has a knack at escaping impossible situations. Somehow, he managed to fight through the ensuing Great Schism, and also now the hordes of Flood on board High Charity, and escape, making it back to Earth to rejoin the fight. Yet another one of the many impossible acts this Australian legend managed to somehow accomplish. Back on Earth, he took a more relaxed non-combat role for a while, acting as Crow's Nest's communication operator. He sent Kilo-23 to rescue Chief, Johnson and Arbiter from the jungle near Voy, which begs yet another mind-bending question. Dubbo somehow managed to make it back to Earth from High Charity before Chief. How the hell did he manage that? Questions. So many questions. When the Covenant began invading Crow's Nest, Dubbo rearmed himself and once again took on a combat role, clearing the hangar of invaders before making his escape. He then once again rendezvoused with Chief in the city of Voy, helping destroy the AA defences the Covenant had established, before having yet another dice with the Flood. When the infected ship came crashing down in Voy, he helped with the cleansing procedure on the ground, but was eventually evacuated to the Dawn with all the other survivors before Artas glassed the area. Being the battle-hungry marine that he is, he felt obliged to go through the portal to fight the Covenant one last time on the Ark. 
His journey down to the surface didn't go quite as expected though. His pelican was shot down on its descent and he and the few other surviving marines were forced to stay in the shadows and hide from a brute scavenging party. However, when they rendezvoused with Chief once again, all bets were off and they slaughtered the scavengers with ease. He and Chief once again joined forces to clear an LZ for the dawn and to push towards the cartographer. He demonstrated his impeccable driving skills in a gorse hog while Chief was on the gun and the two iconic heroes fought through waves of wraiths and took down a scarab. This man is capable of just about anything. Once they'd found Truth's location, Dubbo and Chief took up arms together one last time as the dynamic duo cleared out one of the shield towers together before making their final effort towards the citadel in the heaviest armor they could muster. As Chief and Arbiter went to stop Truth, Chips was forced to evacuate the now flood infested area with the rest of the Marines and the Elites, fleeing to safety on board the Shadow of Intent. When Chief and Arbiter stayed behind to defeat the flood once and for all, Chips decided that it was finally time to take a breather from his eternal battle against aliens, robots and space zombies and headed home through the portal. When Chief never made it back home, Chips decided that it was time to honor his battle partner one last time. So he joined up with the other war veterans and took part in the three volley salute at the Voy War Memorial, making sure to remember not only the Master Chief, but all those who served alongside him and witnessed what this Aussie badass was truly capable of. Chips Dubbo was more than merely a private. He was a war hero of the greatest extent. He served humanity like few others ever could and earned himself one long, sunny vacation. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the mostly canon story of Chips Dubbo, the invincible Australian Marine. Given that his canonical history is mostly just the events of the games, I felt like the little canon inaccuracies with his history that in reality were just poetic license could be made a bit more interesting with some slightly extreme speculation. I mean, given the sort of meme status of this character in universe, I figured that it was only fitting that a video that covers his entire history in detail had to have some sort of meme tier speculation, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to give a big thank you to all of my amazing patrons for their continued support over on patreon.com slash hiddenxperia, and thank you all so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.